Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hope everybody's doing well. The goal of this particular lecture overview is to provide, provide you with some information on subcultures, what are they, and how do we approach them sociologically, and then to provide you some information about uh, the wiki for the week. Subcultures uh, whole are, are, are fascinating and interesting. They, they occupy a space in sociology for a variety of reasons. Um, one of them, you can think about you know, the larger society and different groups underneath that society. I mean, subcultures are basically groups that exist within a society itself, and those groups are marked as being distinct. And that distinction may come across in terms of distinct language, distinct dress, style, appearance, lifestyle, hobbies, interests. I mean, something that marks that group off as being distinct from dominant or majority culture, and that people have a distinct identity within that particular group. Now those groups could be the boundary between in-group and out-group, could be very rigid, very hard, or they could be very permeable and soft. People could move in and out. Subcultures could be um, you know, large in terms of the number of membership across the nation or relatively small. Um, so there's characteristics that become important to sort of think about, about subcultures. So for example, um, kind of move to usually music we can identify, a lot of subculture stuff going on with music. Uh, goth music, early days of goth music. This would be true of, of hip hop, would be another example of this, or pretty much any music form goes down this pathway. And a lot of various subcultures go down this pathway. It usually comes out of a particular location, relatively small in terms of number of membership across the nation, very localized. Uh, goth music, its dress, its age, its demeanor, its style, its attitude. Uh, there's a marking of the group from majority culture itself. And there's a sense of belonging and connection and meaning people get by belonging into the subculture, right? So there's, what, but there's that sort of component. Over a period of time, what might happen, this is this happens frequently, is that Subcultures get discovered by capital, get discovered by economic machine, and the subculture gets co-opted and get, gets moved into mainstream society and becomes a commodity to be bought and sold. Um, and then it changes the nature of that subculture. The subculture becomes more diffused um, and less likely to be like this sort of boundary between in and out group that tends to be um, less rigid and people's motivations for belonging to the subculture are now different as well, right? So we could look at that in a lot of different, you know, music forms. Hip hop, if you know the history of hip hop, super interesting. If you go to, to go to New York, New York City, sort of the combination of a lot of forces going on in the 1960s, 1970s, uh, their origins of hip hop going back to that time period. Uh, it was a way of forming community, a lot of community identity around hip hop. It wasn't only music it was it was djing it was it became dance as well there's different aspects of hip-hop um, eventually it became commodified hip-hop became sort of discovered by the industries uh, by the culture industries and became co-opted and brought into mass culture um, there's a huge body of literature about about hip-hop hip-hop early days political um, a focus on development of community solidarity uh, as Chuck D from Public Enemy identified that hip hop was, you know, the black community CNN. It was a way to gain, gain news and perspective. Once it became commodified and, and then sort of mass packaged, it became what Chuck D talked about. It's music in a bottle. It's, uh, and it's, and it's, now we kind of get into issues of now the subculture has moved from a subculture. Now it's part of mass culture. It's been commercialized, commodified. Now they things like hip hop videos become about bling, they become about misogyny uh, or anti-women, uh, very hyper-masculine in nature, violent in nature. And then we start to develop these associations that hip hop has to do with violence and, you know, and homophobia and all these different kinds of things. And hip hop in its origins wasn't 
uh, you know, about that, I think you could argue for sure that there's a homophobic element that's going on within, within that. There's, and there's some, there's some misogyny within that. But what we start to see uh, when it becomes mass commercialized is that it changes. It changes in nature and focus, and it becomes really about, you know, white, middle-class, suburban, suburbia. These become the consumers of this form of music. And now it becomes about their fantasies versus the lived experience of individuals um, from New York and, and areas that were pretty impoverished. So anyway, long story there, uh, but we have sort of subculture making a distinction between the subculture, people who are seeking meaning, uh, they develop an identity around, um, around, you know, uh, lifestyle, music, attitude, language, you know, marking themselves off different from larger group in society itself. Subcultures are a way of finding meaning. It's a way of integrating into a, a group, an important function of subcultures. Um, countercultures are usually trying to be mobilized for change, like running counter to majority culture, and then usually trying to be some sort of voice of change itself. Uh, a gang is a subculture, not a counterculture. So the gangs are oppositional to majority culture for sure. They're different from majority culture. They're not organized and mobilized for bringing about some sort of uh, social change. Um, I mean, different examples, you know, subcultures, right? We can kind of talk about Comic-Con, cosplay, costume play. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of different music forms. Scrabble subculture, there's a cool documentary called Wordplay about Scrabble and the Scrabble subculture. Uh, Rubik's Cube, uh, there's a great video on Netflix on Rubik's Cube and sort of the annual competition of Rubik's Cube and the sort of the community people there. Um, you know, there's uh, a lot of different examples that I want you to explore on that website, uh, the Grinnell College website that I provide you. I mean, it's like this, I think they, the curators of that website do a good job providing a lot of kind of background and context uh, for these subcultures. So for your wiki this week, um, once you do a couple different things, one is to identify a subculture you want to look into. It could be in the past, it could be in the present, uh, it could be in the, from the United States, it could be from somewhere else around the world. Um, and your wiki post is to provide information about that subculture. Okay, like describe it, why, what, what are the elements that make it a subculture? When did it become a subculture? What's a, you know, geographic location, is that important? Um, you know, um, providing background and context and describing the subculture, its membership, what are the things that make it unique in terms of a subculture, and providing, just basically providing that sort of, that, that kind of information about it. Um, and you probably do that in, I don't know, I'm thinking between 200, 400 words, somewhere in there is providing that description of the subculture. Either before or after that, is I want you to provide uh, you know, 200 words approximately on the Society Pages Office Hours uh, podcast, uh, interviewing Holly Thorpe on snowboarding bodies. I was originally gonna put together a quiz on that and I started and I got about I listened to the podcast a while ago. I went back and listened to it. And there's a lot of technical information in that podcast. And I was like, oh man, we're gonna get, we're gonna get too technical for our purposes. Uh, there's a lot of interesting and valuable things that come out of that podcast. Listen to the first three quarters of it. And then you get to that point, you go, I think I, think I got enough. I mean, that's fine, just let it go. Uh, but what I want you to bring into your wiki is provide some things that you found interesting about the sub snowboarding subculture um, in that podcast. And somewhere around 200 words, just provide some description explanation, uh, provide a little bit of a summary of that. Um, and you can, like I said, you can do that before or after your, your uh, wiki post on subcultures. Um, that's about it. You know, the, uh, the sociology of youth subcultures, the O'Connor article you're reading for the week, um, it's a little technical as well, um, but it gets into some stuff that I think is really important to kind of get at, and that's things like this idea about social class and subcultures, uh, using the example of punk as an example, punk subculture coming out of in, in England. There's a working class tension. There's a lot of work, a lot of opposition to the work, a lot of policies that were being generated by the government uh, by, by in England that were creating hardships among, among the working class. 
and working class youth, oftentimes youth are forming subcultures. This isn't always the case, but in this case of punk music, it's youth subcultures are emerging. And that article is on youth subcultures. Uh, and it's usually class, but not always. So the O'Connor's kind of getting into some of the debate. Um, and I'm less interested, you know, I want you to walk away from that article, hopefully with a perspective, a little bit better, a little bit bigger perspective about some issues that are going on with the development of subcultures, how subcultures are unique, even if we have like punk, punk subcultures in the UK are gonna be different than subculture, that same subculture in South America versus Asia. So we have to pay attention to not, you know, cultural influences that are going on within a society itself. Um, look at the issue of subcultural capital, um, the kind of status that people to obtain by becoming a member of a particular subculture, exclusion. So this idea of exclusion that O'Connor gets into, that sometimes, went, you know, in punk music, uh, Riot Girls became the first identified, you know, like, like all-female punk band. And it was a response to the exclusion of of women from performance in punk and sort of that punk subculture. So subcultures sometimes draw these boundaries around race and class, uh, you know, sexual identity, gender identity, other things are going on um, that are going on that are interesting to sort of look at as well. Uh, so I hope you find that valuable. It may be a little bit hard to work through that article. Stick with it, I know you can handle it. Um, hope you're doing well. Uh, if you have any questions, if you ever wanna set up a, a conversation, um, in terms of a Zoom conversation, uh, let me know. I always enjoy having conversations with students. Kind of miss that in this opportunity, this time period right now. So if you want to do that, uh, let me know. Have a great week and uh, look forward to your contributions to subcultures. Take care.